Many of my most popular videos are those of pan reviews and I often get asked what my favorite pan is and my answer after 2018 has been the granite rock pan which changed its name right after my review to the granite stone pan but for about two years the granite stone pan has been my go-to pan. Well today I'm taking a look at the brand new version of the Pro Series of the Granite Stone Pan which is supposedly an improvement over the original which is already my favorite pan. But am I going to take their word for it that it's better? Absolutely not. It's got to pass a few tests first and that's today's video. Now this video has actually taken me kind of a while to produce because looking back at my original granite rock pan and then the one year follow up I did a lot of the same tests. I didn't want to have a third video with a lot of the same tests in there but on the other hand I kind of need to do some of the same tests to compare it to the original. So I ended up shooting way too much video for this review. Uh, so what I'm going to try to do is make it flow a little bit better and show you some of the highlights of that because I don't want this to be an hour long video. So according to the company, the improvements from the original is that the new pan has a hard anodized material. It has a thicker handle, which supposedly disperses the heat better. And which is probably the most significant, it can now be used with induction cookware. It does look like the, the pro is a little bit deeper on the bottom. You can tell I use and abuse this thing. I use it a lot but uh, the, the Pro can be used with induction cooking, uh, the original cannot. And all that sounds great, but it doesn't matter if the pan isn't as even as good as original. So the first thing I do is season the pan, which I did, and that's just a matter of putting some oil in there, pop it in the oven, letting it cool, washing it off, and then you're ready to go. So as with every test for every pan I think I've ever done, the first test I've got to do is the basic fried egg test where I plop it in there, no oil or butter, and see how well the nonstick surface works. And here's how that went. This has been seasoned, it's been washed, and I'm gonna do the simple egg. No butter or oil. Now this is, too, this is typically too big of a pan for one egg, but it's all I've got, so we're gonna have to make do. Hopefully it doesn't spread out too much in here. I'll do my best. Oh look, I got a little piece of shell in there, of course. Now I would hope on the first use that this would be a stellar example of nonstick cooking, but we shall see. I know it was back in 2018. Oh, I know people hate when I do that. People hate it, but guess what? You're not eating it because you can't really have an egg sandwich with an over easy egg. Let me just take a peek underneath here and see how it's doing. As with the original, it's, it's not sticking at all. With no butter oil, look at that. Slides around the pan. All right, well, I think that, as I expected, the first test is pretty good. Got a long way to go, though. Now, one test that I've seen done in quite a few pan ads, which I'm not sure is really even a great test, is uh, they put cheese in there, they melt it, maybe burn it a little bit. But, you know, the cheese has fats in it, so I'm not sure if that's a great test. I did it anyways, and uh, here's how that turned out. I think what I'm going to do now is let this cool off a little bit, hopefully stick to the pan. Well, try to get it to stick to the pan and see what happens. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh yeah, came right off. Maybe it's the fat and the cheese that made it not stick, but it did work. To me, the most impressive test of my original demonstration was when I put marshmallows in there, burned them, and they just plopped right out. And it cleaned up pretty well too. So I, what I wanted to do was try the Pro Series with basically the same test. And not only how the marshmallows come out of the pan, but how the marshmallows clean up after the fact. So here's how that went. But that should not take very long. We're getting some meltage here. Getting some marshmallow meltage. I'm just going to take a little poke with a spatula here. See what happens. Oh, wow, look, it's not sticking. Whoa, but I'm gonna let it get nice and burnt, nice and melted before I pour it out of there. I got smoke coming off of it. It's, it definitely smells like burning marshmallows in here. I definitely think these are burning on the bottom. Let's see what we got. Whoa, let's see about the burnt part. All right, I'm gonna let this actually cool and see after it's caked on there, how well it comes off. So I'm gonna let it cool completely and then see how it scrapes out. When it's hot, it comes out easily. Let's see what when it's cool, I'll do the other side. All right, it has been about 20 minutes and this has cooled considerably, so let's try it out. Oh yeah, look, whoa. Wow, that's, that was no problem whatsoever, look at that. 
This had no problem with it either hot or cooled off. Impressive. Since the Pro Series is supposed to be an improvement over the original, I figured I would try a more brutal, unfair test of the nonstick surface. And this time I tried doing a caramel test and I melted and burned the caramel in there and let it sit for 24 hours. This time I was afraid I may have gone a little bit too far in my test of the nonstick surface. Check it out. I'm gonna melt these caramels and let them sit for 24 hours and see how hard they are to get out. It could be an unfair test, but it'll be a fun test. All right, so I've turned the heat off. I'm gonna try one right now and then I'm gonna let the other two sit for 24 hours and see if there's any difference. So let's try this one. It's still too wet. I don't know if there's a rule for doing melted caramels, but let me try it this way. All right, well, it didn't really, didn't really stick, but let me let these cool. It's currently June 17th at 4.44 p.m. I'm gonna come back in 24 hours and try it then. 24 hours later, June 18th, 4.43 p.m. Here we go. I have a really bad feeling about this, but here we go. Let's try it out. Ooh, uh oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> it is not getting off. Uh-oh, maybe it is. Oh, oh, it just came up. Did you see that? It came right off. Oh, it's sticky too. Wow. So that means this one will come off too. Oh, wow. Do I want to try to eat that? Surely not. An impressive display by the granite stone. I got some more regular cooking tests to do, but right now I'm just going to let the pan bask in its glory before it gets cleaned off. I wasn't going to do this, but if I can ignore the fact that it was burnt and sat out there for 24 hours, I'm still curious what it tastes like. Oh, wow, sticky. Good thing my dentist is back open again. It was burnt and sticky. I've had worse, I've had better. It's kind of like a burnt marshmallow with caramel in it. Hmm, maybe I'm starting to like it now. It's kind of growing on me. All right, so at this point, it seems like I've done mo mostly a bunch of parlor tricks, but I have been using it for everyday actual cooking experiences. So what I'm gonna show you next are how I've been using it around the kitchen for things like chicken, shrimp, sauces, bacon, and it's held up pretty well. So here's, here are those scenes, and then I'm gonna wrap this thing up. And normally I would season my chicken, but because I'm trying to test the stickiness of a pan, I'm not gonna do that, because that could affect it. So I'm gonna put it on there, just raw. All right, usually by this point it's pretty sticky. Let's check it out. Whoa, didn't even stick to it, look at that, wow. It doesn't look like this is sticking at all. Look at that. See how easy that was to flip? It was very easy to flip. The raw side is not grabbing onto the pan like you would expect. And this chicken never stuck to the bottom. Never stuck. I'm gonna let this actually sit because it would be easier to clean off now when it's hot, but let us let it cool and make it even more difficult to clean off. Just rinsing it with water, not even touching it, most of the grease came off already. Oh wow, look at that, right off. I don't even think that was about 10 seconds of scrubbing. And it wasn't even scrubbing, it was more wiping. The old red copper pan, the new granite stone pro diamond, 24 shrimp, two pans. Normally you would put something in the pan, but not for this test. Not for this test, we're doing the nonstick surface. Which once again, we're going in commando style to see how they do. We've started the granite stone looking good. Red copper pan, so far so good. Now normally you let these cook for a little bit, but let's see how sticky they are right out of the gate. Granite stone lifts right off. Granite stone lifts right off. Red copper pan. It's, it's, it's feeling a little sticky, but, it's, but it is coming off. Oh yeah, all this. Okay, that's definitely a lot stickier. Now normally you, would, you wouldn't keep messing with them like this, but I'm just trying to check the surface here. Uh oh, <laughs> it's feeling kind of stuck. Okay, the red copper pan is definitely stickier, but I'm, I'm getting them 
flipped. It is working. The granite stone just, it feels like they've already been, even the ones that I haven't moved feel like they've already been dislodged because it's just so nonstick. I want to say for the grandfather of the pans in my kitchen, the red copper pan didn't do terrible. Didn't do as well as the granite stone. Oh, and this handle's way cooler. This is a much thicker handle though, by the way, than the, even the original granite stone slash granite rock. A respectable showing by red copper, but granite stone wins. All right, first up the red copper pan, almost completely cool. So let's see how well this does. Well, just lightly uh, using the sponge isn't really yielding great results. I still got, uh, still got this here. What if I use the, uh, the abrasive side? Let's try that. Which you're not supposed to do, by the way. But this pan is so old, I don't really use it that much anymore. All right, honestly, that wasn't terrible. Um, I've actually had more problems with other things with the red copper pan, but it took a little bit of uh, scrubbing. The problem with that is that I had to use the abrasive side, which is definitely not advised for this pan. That's one of the reasons I think the nonstick service is gone because I've had to scrub harder to get some of the stuff off of here. All right, to be as unfair as I could possibly could, I actually did a second batch of shrimp in the granite stone and I've let this sit as well, so let me see how this does. This is not using the non-abrasive side. I didn't have to resort to the abrasive side and clean up completely very quickly. It's an impressive surface. Well, because the red copper pan did a respectable job with the shrimp, even though the granite stone did better, I'm gonna do it for another test using a basic sauce that I make up with tuna and cream chicken. Now for this test, I'm just gonna cook them in there and pour it out and let it sit for probably an hour or two and let it really cake on there and see which one cleans up better. All right, my beautiful sauce is almost done in the granite stone. My beautiful sauce is almost done in the red copper pan. All right, I'm not gonna scrape it too carefully because I want some leftover in the bottom here. All right, that's nice and nasty. Let's move on to the red copper. I think that's pretty close to the uh, granite stone. So I'll let this cool for maybe an hour. I'll come back and clean them up. All right, here we go. It's been about an hour. Let's try it out. This is not coming off. All around the edge, not good. I'm gonna have to use the abrasive side. I wouldn't say it was terrible, but I had to resort to the abrasive side once again, and that's just not good for this surface long term. Let's see if I can avoid using the abrasive side of the sponge again. Never had to use the abrasive side. And normally I would probably soak these in water first, but, but really I'm just trying to see a difference between the old school nonstick pans and the newer ones. And this clearly is better. And this experience with the, this granite stone is exactly like I had with the old one. And after uh, two years, you can see that it's still holding up pretty well. So let me try to conclude all this after about two weeks of using this pan. I will say that it seems like it has the same surface as the original granite rock slash granite stone pan. It's a much heavier pan than the original. The handle is also much more durable and it has that induction plate at the bottom. So it certainly has been improved over the original. I'm actually probably more impressed by the handle than anything because the, looking back, the original handle was a little bit kind of chintzy. This one is actually really solid and it doesn't really seem to get hot. Not that the original one did as much, but comparing them side by side, the handle on the new one is significantly improved. The only real con I can find about it isn't really about the pan itself, but actually on the website that's being sold, is it's only being sold in sets of two right now. I'm hoping that's only temporary, but the breakdown of that two pan set is still about the same price per pan as the original, so that's actually a pretty good deal. I think as long as you season it, as long as you take care of it like you would any nonstick pan, I think you're gonna like the Pro Series of the Granite Stone. So that's all I've got, guys. If you've used the original Granite Stone, tell me what you think in the comments below. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time.